Virtual reality changes many genres. This video will focus on melee combat, which is close combat usually involving some sort of weapon used to strike an enemy. In traditional non-VR games, this involves pressing buttons with the usual light and heavy attacks, some way to block, and depending on the combination of the buttons that you press, you can usually link some combos. With virtual reality, it's completely different. You have full control over the sword, or whatever weapon you have in your hands. You can do a short jab or a long swing, block an incoming attack or dodge it and stab them in the face. It isn't without its problems though. You're holding a plastic controller in the real life, but in the game you might be holding a heavy sword. This can cause a disconnect between what you see and what you feel. When you hit an enemy, there's no resistance, so your sword could simply ghost straight through an enemy. There's also the fact that you could potentially cheat by simply wiggling your wrists. I'm going to go over several VR games and how that they're taking different approaches to solve these problems. Back in the early days, it was believed that you had to keep everything one to one. This means that whatever you do with your real hands matches perfectly with your in-game hands. Some developers would use a little smoothing to reduce the tiny jitters from every little movement in your hands, but weapons feel weightless and it was possible to simply wiggle your wrists to spam strikes. One of the earliest games to try and solve the sword wiggle problem was Vanishing Realms, which was released back in 2016. They did this by having the enemies wear armour and they'd have large shields, so if you tried to wiggle you'd simply hit the armour and you wouldn't get any hit points. You'd need to wait for the enemies to strike, then block with your weapon which would give you an opening to attack. It did work very well, although it feels dated and a little clunky by today's standards. Titan Slayer, which came back in April 2017, used a different approach. There was no locomotion, if you looked down you could see an outline of a square which was 2 meters by 2 meters. Enemies would come at you with you having to strike with force. The more effort you put into your strikes, the more damage you would do. They made full use of your room scale, with some attacks which you could be blocked with a shield, but some would require you to move, so you'd have to duck or sidestep to dodge. It was very physical and had some of the biggest boss fights in VR even now over three years later. Carnage Chronicles was a dungeon crawler that released into early access way back in early 2017 and it's recently hit full release. It features some really nice looking environments, a lengthy single player campaign that can be played co-op, an upgrade system with you able to trade to upgrade weapons. It's a game that feels like it was made from 2017 in some aspects, like with the weightless weapons and the way you grab items by simply placing your hand near them and then they'd automatically go into your inventory. To stop the wiggle attacks, they made it so hits will only register if you put enough force into them. So wiggling your sword won't cause any damage. Enemies will block your attacks, so you can't just go into a fight swinging. You need to block and counter like in Vanishing Realms. Despite it feeling a little dated, it's still a great game though, so don't let it put you off if you're looking for a VR dungeon crawler. The most recent VR game to use the one-to-one -one combat is Asgard's Wrath a 25 hour plus epic made by Sanzaro Games exclusively for Oculus. When you get into a sword fight, you can hit the enemies, but you won't actually do any damage if they have runic armour. You have to block incoming attacks to build up a rage meter, and then when they do a special attack, which can be identified by the blue glow around them, you can block it, which will stagger them back, giving you a window to attack and remove the armour. Once the armour is removed, you're free to attack any way you want. It took a little bit of getting used to, but once I did, I found it enjoyable. But after you've gone through many battles, 15 hours later, it started to get repetitive to the point where if enemies would pop up, I'd get a little frustrated. In the end, I turned it down to easy, which removes the armor element of the combat, just to get through the last 10 hours of the game, and on easy, you can kill them with ease. Luckily, the game is more than just combat, with lots of moments where you're exploring, collecting materials, upgrading, solving puzzles, etc and it's still one of my favourite VR games I've played so far. One method developers used to solve the issue of not having any resistance or feedback in real life when you strike an enemy was to have you actually slice through them. A simple example of this is Fruit Ninja VR, which has you slicing through flying fruit. It's very arcadey, so it doesn't matter what angle the blade's at, you can hit the fruit with the back of the blade or the side and it'll still slice through it. A similar game which uses physics to make the sword handling more realistic is Katana X. This has a mode with you slicing fruit, but now the angle of the sword, 
as well as the amount of force you apply to the swing, matter. Hitting the fruit with the back or side of the blade will result in it bouncing off, and if you don't use enough force, the fruit can actually stick to the blade instead of going all the way through it. The best mode in this game bow is tatami. This is where posts rise from the floor with sections of rope around them. You have to slice through the roped areas of the posts. If you hit the black area, you lose time. It starts out simple with you slicing through single or double posts, but it gets harder with you really having to think about how you move the katana through them. Because if you go too far, you might hit the black on another post. But if you don't use enough force, the sword will get stuck. I jumped back into this to record some footage for the video and I ended up playing for 30 minutes because it was so much fun. Another game that uses the slice method is Aeon, which allows you to slice up robots into as many pieces as you want. You can even slice a rocket in half. The Vader Immortal Star Wars series has a lightsaber dojo in each episode. You can force grab the lightsaber, then slice up the small ball training drones grab and pull them and then throw them into other enemies as well as parry and strike larger droids in half. It's really good fun and it feels great especially when you throw the lightsaber and then force grab it back into your hand. Until You Fall is a unique hack and slash rogue light which uses a hybrid system. The weapons actually have some weight with the axe for example having a slight delay to your movements. It's a heavier more powerful weapon but the trade off is that it's not as responsive as a lighter sword. When in combat, you then have to counter enemies by placing your weapon as indicated on screen. If you block successfully, you can then have the opportunity to break the shield, you then have to attack at the angle shown on screen. I wasn't keen on this when watching it on a video, but after playing it, it works really well and it shows that there isn't actually just one way to do melee combat in VR. Lastly, let's talk about full physics based combat systems. Gorn wasn't a full physics VR game like some of the newer titles, but it did use physics to have weapons make impacts with the cartoony, skinny legs freaks that you repeatedly beat to a bloody pulp. To try to solve the issue with the disconnect people thought you would feel if your hands weren't lined up one to one, they used rubber weapons that would simply bend when they came into contact with anything, rather than your hand moving. Gorn is still a lot of brain out over the top fun, but I doubt we're going to see any other developers use this method when it comes to weapon handling. The first game to really show off what full physics can do to VR melee combat was Blade and Sorcery. Weapons aren't one to one anymore, with the heavier your weapon, the more the delay to your movements. Weapons now collide together, as well as with the environment and your own hands. When you strike an enemy, it won't go through them, it will actually make impact so you can't just swing wildly through enemies to cause damage. You have to be more mindful of your arm movements and the weapon that you're using and how it will interact with the environment. Best of all though is the ability to stab. This can result in some brutal kills and it was the early footage showing this that really got a lot of attention. I still think when it comes to pure physics based melee combat, Blade and Sorcery does it the best. Boneworks released towards the end of 2019 has quickly become one of the most popular virtual reality games thanks to some viral marketing and its unique full physics based world where pretty much everything can be picked up. Even your own in-game body is physics based. The melee combat isn't the best in Boneworks in my opinion, but what Boneworks does well is use a combination of weapons like swords and axes, as well as guns, all wrapped up in a cool world with an 8 hour plus single player campaign, as well as various sandbox and arena modes that give you hours of gameplay. The last game I want to highlight is The Walking Dead Saints and Sinners, which released January on PC and more recently on the PSVR. This is a game that I feel strikes a really nice balance between having physics based weapons but doesn't have physics based body which can get in the way sometimes in Boneworks. You spend a lot of time stabbing walkers in the head and they really nail the feeling of stabbing in this game. You have to use a broad swing to penetrate the skull of the zombies, short jabs won't work and weapons can get stuck forcing you having to yank and pull them out again. This type of system won't work for every game but for a zombie game based in the Walking Dead universe it works perfectly. And just like I mentioned with Until You Fall, I think it highlights that there isn't a one size fits all. Depending on the game and style of gameplay the developer wants, there's still a lot of freedom to make a game feel unique and I'm sure we're going to see a lot of more interesting ways developers tackle the melee combat VR problem. And that's the end of the video. If you think I've missed anything then let me know in the comments. Someone told me actually that if you don't subscribe, 
then a puppy will die. So save a puppy today. Unless you don't like puppies, actually they can be pretty annoying, so don't bother, noisy little shit.